So if you're African and you're in diaspora, all you have to do is make up your mind, take a visit, you know, see the businesses, see what you want to do in Africa. Yeah. If the first country you go to in the first year doesn't favor you, look for another country. Look it for is, another. There's always something. But don't Africa. ever give up. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If everybody there could come back and re-educate one another, we tell you what we are here. Yeah. Yeah. You tell us what is going on out there and how we can be better people. So you think Africa is missing also its diaspora? Yes. I promise you with the education that those people have because enlightenment is very strong. Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Janita Maya and this is the Repat Podcast. Now we do have a special guest all the way from... Well, you have to say it yourself. I have to say it. Yeah. Yo, what's happening, world? I go by the name Catch Upon the Chips, Afro Dance House Sensation of the World, all the way from Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And yo, it's been an honor to be here. You know, great vibes, great energy. And this podcast is going to be the podcast. So okay. stay tuned and get ready. Same energy. Oh, thank you. It's hard to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Oshea Duke Jackson. Um, yeah. So you're here on tour. Yeah, I mean you're doing a, a a great job here in Uganda. People are throwing babies at you on the stage yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's that's crazy. Hard. So I wasn't familiar with um with your music. Yeah, but uh, once my staff met you, yeah, and I started showing the links to other people. Like, you know this guy? Like, yeah, I love yeah. this guy's music. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you know, you're such a vibe, man. Like, mm-hmm. you kind of remind me of no offense, like like the Prince kind of vibe, like yeah. real cool. <laughs> and um, like back in the eighties, uh, I loved eighties. That that was the golden time. Yeah, eighties and the nineties. Those are the golden hours of the world. Mm-hmm. And, and so, and I know that you've been, and we've seen what Afro beats or mm-hmm. um, Afro dance hall. Mm-hmm just around the impact it's had on the black world, mm-hmm. you know, and, and how people are now wanting to be, you, we talk about Nigeria now, mm-hmm. either mm-hmm. they hate you or they love you. <laughs> yeah, there's no way out. <laughs> so kind of take us back to how you got started in music and and how were Nigerians in, in the music industry looked at at that particular time mm-hmm. to where you are now, right now being received all around the world. How, how has that changed? I think the originality of Afrobeat itself, because there are a lot of genres of music. There's Afro rap, there's Afro soul, there's mm-hmm. a lot of it. Okay. But Afrobeat should be the base foundation. It was started by Felakuti. Oh, yes. I know a lot of people know him. Yes. So after that time, Afrobeat kind of evolved because he was playing live music. Right. There was no auto tune, there was none of that. Yeah. He was just telling the stories about stuff that were happening. In Nigeria, yeah, not the world, not in Nigeria, and the government kept locking him up all the especially time. Especially Buhari, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he went hard on that man. Yeah, he was so so. You know, after that era, then there was the new blood of Afro Afrobeat that just wanted to make happy music. Okay, because there was so much going on in Nigeria. There was Abacha. We had a military rule. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people. There was t- Nigeria is a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but people just want to have fun. That's when you know all the artists started emerging. They kind of smoothened the Afro beat and made it more commercial, more fun, more presentable to the rest of the world. Okay. You know, the tunes were bouncing, they had the right rhythm, said the right things. Okay. You know, and it's been totally amazing to see Afrobeat grow from that okay. to what it is now. Okay. Because before, if you ever search Afrobeat, you'd be like, what what? What 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 is this? What okay. are they saying? Right. But now it's like everybody wants to be on it. Right. You know, every artist, yo, give me that Afro beat vibe. Even artists in the Caribbean send me beats, Caribbean beats to write Afro beat to. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. But was it like that when you started? No. What was it like when you started? When I started, honestly, in Nigeria, when I started, I had to actually move back to Nigeria because I actually studied in Malaysia. I studied mass comm in Malaysia. So at the time I started, music was in Malaysia. And at that point, they were loving my music back home. So I moved back to Nigeria mm-hmm. and started music officially. Okay. You know, and at that point it was, oh God, it was easy. Music was just the way Ugandans are. If the music is good, they will love it. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's how it was in 2013. There's no way you can make good music and it will not pop. Okay. There is no way. Compared to now, there, there are streaming farms, all these things, there are right. ways they pull up the numbers and make it look like this is the hottest song. When the actual hottest songs are just right there and the people that know those songs are hot actually know. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of technology in the mix with the originality of the Mm -hmm. music. So I think it's just, everybody's just hungry to get whatever they want. 
but the people that make the soul the music that mm-hmm. has that soul you can never ignore because music all music needs its time it'll get to where it's going what it's what year did you get your first like you, you moved back from malaysia mm. let me just ask you this how was your experience as a nigerian in malaysia how were you treated when you it were was there? hard you get in the elevator and kids are looking at you like <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> what color is this <laughs> like, what color is this man uh-huh. you know it was it was really it was funny to me though at the time mm-hmm. but there were still other people that were just cool you know chinese people they were just cool with it you know and stuff like that my principal in school at the time mr guna he was my friend so okay. he understood i used to do music so sometimes i go to the studio all night and i call him and my yo boss i'm not coming to school today I'm like oh <laughs> you do your music thing you know okay. <laughs> yeah it was fun yeah, yeah it was good can i ask were yeah. you how many black people were you in malaysia by then ah yeah were you it, was, that many? it was a small community no it was really small Mm-hmm. Even in my class, we were like about four guys and two girls. Okay. What? Yeah. The rest are Chinese people. Okay. 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 And then what year did you move back to Nigeria? Uh, it was 2011-ish. Yeah. 2011. 11. Okay. Yeah, so it took 11, 12. I had to like find the right producer to explain what Afro dance hall is to him. Oh. Okay. Because yeah, everybody was just making Afro beat or whatever. Pop. It was pop at the time. Right. Yeah, because they used to categorize Nigerian music as pop. Okay. So everybody was just making that. And I had to go to this guy and be like, yo, bro, <laughs> I found something. Okay. If you mix Afrobeat and dance hall and we don't speak oh. Patois, we speak the indigenous language. Okay. It's going to pop. So you were the one that's credited with Afro dance hall. Wow. I feel like it's my thing. But mm-hmm. when I came to Uganda, I realized these guys have been doing it for the longest <laughs> time. Like, wow. Which okay. artists in Uganda were doing Afro? Yo, Dance them Chameleon have been doing this long time. Oh, okay. Palazzo, they've been doing this long time. Weasel, radio, like long time. Bebe Cool, wrong time. Mm-hmm. But I actually feel like, okay, I came to say, okay, I want to be different. I want to give mine a name so I can sell it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know? If you come here and say, oh, Ugandan music, Nigerian music, Nigerian music, Afrobeat, Ugandan music, Afro dance hall. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So when you had your first hit, what song was that? It was Show Me Your Rosé. Show Me Your Rosé. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How did your life change after that particular? Why? <laughs> you know, ro- rosé is actually alcohol, right? Yes. No, no, we're not advertising, but... Uh, Everywhere I go, <laughs> whenever they say, where are Rosie? Show me your Rosie. I just get people buying me alcohol <laughs> all the time. Really? Yeah. For real though. Okay. Like they just buy me drinks, you know, and stuff like that. And it got me a huge amount of recognition because even the day I shot the video, I think I knew just two people, just the director and my manager yes. on set. And the girl I was dating at the time. Okay. The only three people I knew on set. The rest I did not know. In the clubs, the clubs love playing that song because when they say, Where your Rosie? Show me your Rosie. Everybody wants to show off and buy alcohol. Okay. And if I'm there, boom. They just, <laughs> they just say, Yo, bottles to that guy that sang that song. Right. You know, it got me a lot of recognition. This is in Lagos. Yeah, in Lagos. Okay. Yeah. And on the day of the video shoot, the song was already big. Okay. I was in Malaysia at the time and somebody called me, I'm like, Yo, bro, your song is big. I was like, What? Nah, you're just playing with me. So you were in a Malaysia when you recorded it? No, I was in Lagos. You are in Lagos? I, yeah, I recorded it, and then I traveled. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And then somebody called me about three months later, like, yo, this song is busting the club. They're buying alcohol whenever they play the song. You need to come back full time now. Okay. And I was like, okay, okay. So you quit school? No, I actually finished. Okay, you finished Yeah, school. I finished my mask on, but you know how we do it. Africa. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. We, I, me and Mr. Guna had a plan. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So yeah. at that time, when you were Nigerian, even mm. like, let's say, um, traveling the continent, mm. so I'm, I'm not so really yeah. avert. I, I met Iyanya in 2018. Yeah, yeah, I happened yeah, to meet yeah. him. <laughs> but I didn't know. That was my introduction. Okay. Was was Nigerian music accepted at that time? And, and when you went to other places, were you discriminated against in your music as an artist? No, it was actually, there were actually African clubs, African clubs in Asia that played Nigerian music. Wow. But not as heavy as it is now. No. No, it wasn't as heavy as it is now. It was just maybe a couple, one, two, three songs, you know, but ash, now it's it's different. It's different. It's way different now. Like they could literally play Afrobeat from 10 till 4 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. And personally, I'm not going to say, you know, 
I have anything against it, but I feel like music should be a cocktail. It should be a ch- chocolate box of chocolate. You could play different genre one night. You don't have to stick to Afrobeat. You don't have to stick to Ugandan music. You don't have to stick to Makosa the whole I'm night. a piano. I'm a yeah. piano. It gets right. boring. Yeah, it gets real, boring. Though. Let's not lie. Even if you do like this too, money. <laughs> <laughs> it gets boring. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. You need to make music versatile so you okay. can please everybody in the club. Let me so, let me ask you this before we go to Joan. Mm-hmm. Now, with... um. So people like me who were born mm-hmm. in America, came out in, in the African American community, Afro beats, obviously reggae is something that was yeah. very close to a lot of people in the African American community because of Bob Martin, and our relationship yeah. with Jamaicans and things like that. Yeah. But Afro beat, when I was at least coming up, you, I, I didn't know any of these guys, DeVito, mm. like who is this guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but how, like now, these guys are selling out, Burner Boy selling out sure. Madison Square Garden. Sure. These guys are getting nominated for BET Awards. They can charge, yeah. if not the same amount as Drake, if not more. Yes. How were you guys at that time wanting to get recognition from the rest of the diaspora? How did the diaspora receive you? Let's say non-African, you know, were you guys looking to get respect from like the African-American community, the black British community? What was what was it like as far as you as an artist trying to get your respect as like, you know, as a top guy in the world, in the black world? For me, music is like a gospel. Okay. You see. That's why most times I kind of mind the kind of music that I make. Even if it's fun music, I still try to make it fun to be evergreen. So it's to go out there and let people know, yo, we're here and we have music. Mm -hmm. We have music for days. I promise you there are artists that you've not heard that are like, wow, even bigger than the ones we know. In Africa. Yes. Okay. Even in Uganda here. Even in Uganda. Yeah. So I think the main goal was to prove to the world that, yo, it's not just rap, it's not just R&B, because there was a transition in Africa when all we listened to was foreign music. Nobody's yeah. going to like yeah. it. Yeah. All we listened to was, no matter what I do. <laughs> yeah. We were caught up on that. <laughs> right, right. Nobody could tell us anything. Yes. Yeah. No matter what. Yes. You know? And I think it all started when, Nobody knew what that man was saying. I don't know what he was saying, <laughs> but I grooved to that. Right, right, right. And it actually went worldwide. Yes. That song was bigger than- It's actually than a the, breakup song. It was song. even bigger than the person that sang it. Yeah. I didn't know it was a breakup song. It's a, it's I, was, a I, breakup I, I, song. I thought it was a wine your waist kind of thing, you know. I was like, what? <laughs> so at, at that point, I was like, oh, so African music can do this to the world? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that was a wake up call for everybody. Like, mm-hmm. okay, let's do it. You know, yeah. and then Afrobeat, everybody say investing money into it. Yo, going worldwide. I even actually left my label because they were not ready to go international. After I went to New York and won the NEA Awards, okay. huh? I went back to Nigeria. I was like, yo, bro. There's a different life out there. Right. We need to go out there. So my label at the time were like, oh, they were not ready to go international, yada, mm-hmm. yada, yada. And I was like, you know what? Peace. How, how, are, you, how are you perceived in New York? How was that? In New York, I didn't even move with Nigerians. That's the crazy thing. I was Whoa. always with people from Trinidad, Jamaica, Guyana. Yeah. Like I went there and we rammed it hard. I went to Trinidad and Tobago Carnival. I went to Guyana Carnival. Right. I went to Miami Carnival. Mm-hmm. I performed in all those places. So mm-hmm. some of them didn't even know I was Nigerian. Even really? my song, even my song. This is before Afrobeat is what it is now. Wow. This was 2016. So even when I went there, when they hear Shorty came in and she called me, right? they said, Oh, that's Whiskey. I said, The Whiskey is not the only artist in Nigeria. <laughs> there are other guys. <laughs> there are, that's what I tell you. There's Davido, there's Burner Boy. That was before yes. Burner Boy is yeah, Burner Boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said mentioning names. They're like, Who are these guys? Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, they, they, they just literally feel every song you hear is Whiskey. Yeah. Right. You know, because yeah. that's the only artist they actually know. Right. Mm-hmm. They're like, Yo, so in Africa, do you guys have lions? And- <laughs> You know, chimpanzees are like, yeah, we do. I have two. <laughs> you know, it was it's fun. Yeah, they didn't get it, but now they see. But these are black people that were asking yeah. you if you have chimpanzees. Yeah. That's like a- yeah. Okay. They think in Africa, it's like, <laughs> 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 like that's how we it. Yeah, they think that's how we move. Like, did, did you get offended a little bit, though? Threes, huh? Were you offended at all? I no, mean, no, no. Because they don't know any better. You mm-hmm. see? Right. I don't, I don't let people's perception of the reality that I live affect yeah. the reality that L- I actually live. Let me, let me, I'm glad you said it because. Yeah. Um, I know Johnny has a question, but I want to um, yeah. just build on this because a lot of sure. times us as a diaspora, mm. um, you know, there's a um, beefs in between the black world. Straight. Nigeria versus Ghana. Yeah. African-Americans versus yeah. Nigerian-Americans. Sure. And sometimes we can have those perceptions and it will cause us to not want to work together. True. But I see you don't have that attitude. No. And because you have don't have the attitude, how has that helped you in your career? It has helped me actually be received as a person first. Mm. regardless of country 
a person. This is a person that I want to work with. This is a person that I want to talk to. This is a person that I want to have communications with, regardless of country. Because I actually, in Africa, all this country borders is just an illusion. Mm -hmm. Africa is Africa. It is one country. Mm -hmm. It's the same people, the same skin, mm -hmm. the same beliefs, the same cultures. The other day, when was it? At uh, uh, Where was that last place? The last place you performed? Uh, Mbende. 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 So there was this little girl they sent to come get a lighter for me. I gave her the lighter and she she kind of knelt down to collect yeah. it. And I was like, they do this in Nigeria too. Mm. You know, it's the same culture. We were just divided. I don't know how they split this thing, mm -hmm. you know. So for me, I just like the fact that I'm able to blend in with whatever country I go into. I've been to Colombia. I did co collaborations with some of the artists. There. I released an EP titled Colombiana. Mm. And then I come to East Africa. I did a collaboration with strictly East African artists and I named it Jaribu. Oh. See, that's how I am. When I'm in a location, I want to absorb as much energy as I can and give it back in the way that Afro dancehall artists would do it, as mm. Ketchup would do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you said something about they don't know any better. Mm. Wait, you don't get offended when someone says you have chimpanzees in your no, background. No, I don't. But why, why do you say they don't know any better? Like, what's the... Because in history... All we have is from when the white man came to Africa. What happened before that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nobody knows. There's no documentation of that. Mm -hmm. You see? So when you go to these American schools and all these, you know, other schools, they teach you the history that was written from the moment that these people came here. Mm -hmm. There's no history from when Africa was mm -hmm. Africa, when there was the God of Tonda. When they were, mm -hmm. I know you guys have some gods and stuff. Mm -hmm. There was yeah. no documentation of that. You mm -hmm. see? So I don't I don't get offended. It's mm -hmm. just, you, if you knew, you would you would know there's power in Africa. I heard there's this rock in uh what's the name of that place? We were traveling and uh, Palazzo was telling me a story about this huge ass rock in some place. Mm -hmm. I think it's Western Uganda. Yeah, in yeah. Western Uganda. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Like this rock has a history and it has myths where you could literally go to the rock and touch it and actually pray and manifest stuff and it'll actually happen. Wow. Yeah. So if we have things like that in Africa, what are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying compared to Miami Beach? I'd rather be at the Rock. Right. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, yeah. uh, one thing I, I noticed about <clears throat> the Nigerians in comparisons, no, no offense to yeah. anywhere else in Africa, but when Nigerians come to create something, they want to control it top to bottom. Everything mm -hmm. in the We're value stubborn. chain. We are stubborn. We are stubborn. <laughs> if I do a song, once I know like 50% of people know it in Nigeria, I'm going to the next country. Boom. Yeah. You have to know it. Yeah. We move around compared yeah. to compared to other countries. Other countries are like, yo, I'm the king of the zone. I'm cool with that. Right, I'm right, okay. right. Like, look at me here. I'm here now. Before you know it, I'm going to have to go to Rwanda, release a video there, mm -hmm. leave there, go to Sudan, do some things there. Like, it's... That's why I said it's a gospel. Yes. The more people you reach, mm -hmm. the more money you make. It's just... Yes. It's as simple as that. Let me also position this because I know that... Um, me as an American traveling through Africa, mm -hmm. it is right. a little difficult. But I, I've heard that from being an, an African, yeah. traveling through Africa can be difficult. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to know, um, for you, I know you're a, a, a star in, 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 in the genre, mm -hmm. but have you experienced several levels of, um, do you get treated better throughout Africa or do you feel like you, you're, you're treated better in outside of the continent? Well, I get treated the same way. I use a Nigerian passport. Do you know what a Nigerian passport is? It is a green wow. passport. Okay. Well, I just wanted to see you with that. Hey, you, stand here. <laughs> really, all the time? Every bum time. Yeah. So, even Apart from Uganda, I don't know what it is about Uganda. Like, Ugandans are just, they really don't. The hospital. Yeah. 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 But, but everywhere I've else. never had that in Uganda. But where? Everywhere else. But now, after impacting, because Nigeria, we got to be honest, Afrobeat, mm. The uh, Nollywood, mm, yeah. the culture. Mm. I hear kids all the time saying Wahala. Mm, Wahala, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you even have like Afrobeat artists in Uganda. True, true. Why do you think that Nigeria ha has so much effect on the black world? Because we're stubborn. But you still get discriminated <laughs> against, although you're, you, cause you're that's, stubborn. That's the flip side of it. Mm. We're so stubborn. That we're everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're like ants. Which, <laughs> yo, in India, in I don't know, there's some countries you could name. They're Nigerians there. That everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Turkey, mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, like you said, Jakba, everybody's going out to look for what we don't have in Nigeria. Right. You yeah. see, we could literally be doing this interview in Nigeria and the lights will go off. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know when it's coming back. 
Yeah. You see how they give you guys notice? Oh, tomorrow uh, we're gonna put off the light from six to nine. Yeah. Please do not be offended. Yeah. In Nigeria, nobody gives about that. Yeah. Put it off. It's like off. Next yeah, week generator, Friday, you put generator it back to be on. loud. Yeah. <laughs> next yeah. week Friday, you put on your generator. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, and the problem is the generators are being imported by the rich guys. So the rich guys don't even want you to have electricity, so you yeah. can buy more generators. Yeah, yeah whoever our whoever solves the electricity yeah. problem in Nigeria is a dead person. Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. Um, just to explain to our viewers, Japa means to leave your yeah to go in search of greener pastures. Okay, yeah. so why did you Japa? Because I did, you see, everything that has happened in my life has been just kind of preordained. I got a wife today. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? There's plenty wife, yo. <laughs> I didn't even leave Nigeria because I was going to search for anything. Uh, yeah. I was in uh, Oba Family Awolo Awol University. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Iloran. Uh, in uh, Iloran, Ileife. It was in Ileife. Okay. So I was in school, and then there was this strike. They do that all the time. They could yeah. strike for like eight months. Okay. And I was like, what? So I'm gonna go sit home with my parents for eight months. Right. Do you know who my parents are? <laughs> well, my dad is a military guy. Not like he's military, but you know, God bless his soul. He is hard. Yeah. To live and I was like, nope, I'm not doing that. You know, right. I registered for uh, ULI. It was ULI, the university, and they accepted me. And I was like, you know what? I will save money and I will go by myself. Mm -hmm. I did everything by myself. And I traveled. And my parents didn't even know at the time that I traveled. Mm -hmm. Really? So I, yeah, I was still calling them on normal call. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my numbers. I, I could call them on normal call. Like, oh, I'm in school. Mm. It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, you're, you're on, on holiday. I said, no, we're having group okay. classes. <laughs> So my classes. But I was in another school already, just fast forwarding things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, before they knew it took time, when they started seeing me like, you know, on TV and stuff like, you're not in the country. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they were already excited about it by that time. So yeah, I didn't go out looking for greener pastures. It was just because there was strike. I couldn't go to school. Yeah. I didn't want to go back home. I just yeah. wanted to get done with school and yeah. mm -hmm. know what I wanted to do with my life. You see? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I read, Um, I was watching a particular... Uh, I, I don't know if it's Channels News, right. it's, you know, huge channel in, in Nigeria, right. and they were doing a study about so many talented Nigerians are leaving, mm -hmm. and they and they, were, they went to Canada. Mm -hmm. I don't know what cities they were spread mm -hmm. out, but they took a census, mm -hmm. and the census said out of like I don't know two hundred people, ninety nine percent said they would never come back to Nigeria. <laughs> so for those people, because our podcast is about coming back to Africa, yeah. and obviously you had left. And you came back coming. and you found so much success, yeah. so much opportunity in Africa. I love. You, 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 and, and there's some people that are, are, are worried about coming back or have doubts. And they have, I, I was seeing a, a lady that's a Nigerian in Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. and she was complaining about how bad things have gotten. But when I look at you, you don't have that mindset or that mentality. How do you, how do you become successful in Nigeria? Even if you're Nigerian and you left and you want to come back and do things, one of my best friends is Nigerian and uh, he's living in Poland, but he's scared to go back and try things. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you give uh, the Nigerian community that's abroad in the diaspora how to come back and be successful in their home country? I feel like you cannot come back to Africa in general, not just even Nigeria, because mm -hmm. there are people from Uganda, people from, Zimbabwe, yeah. you know, to come back to Africa, you need to make up your mind. Mm -hmm. When you're ready, you come back. Okay. Me, I didn't think I was going to come back. I won't lie. Why? But Why didn't you come back? Like, <laughs> Africa is just Africa, you know. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Africa is, there's no way you can explain it to somebody out there. Like, yo, if you go to Africa, you just scare them. Mm. You see, if I start saying, no, there's no lights in my country. We don't have light. Oh my God. There's traffic. You know, yeah. They will get scared. Yeah. So regardless of all that, you know, being in diaspora, you just need to decide, okay, I'm going to take a month, go look at it and see how it feels. Yes. Okay. If it favors me. And the fact that you're in diaspora and you're from Nigeria does not in any way mean that you have to go back to Nigeria. Mm. You could come to Uganda. You could go to Tanzania. You mm -hmm. could go to, there are a lot of other African countries that you could go there and invest and they will welcome you as an African. Mm. It doesn't have to be your home country. It is Africa. Africa is one. Mm -hmm. We're just divided. I'm so mad about it. Mm -hmm. Like it hurts me so bad when I think about it. I was on tour with Palazzo. I saw children crying, mm -hmm. chasing the bus. Mm -hmm. I was like, these people don't even know me, but because I'm African. Oh. Mm. If I looked Chinese, I'm sure they'd be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> who, 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 who this guy with Palazzo? Who's that guy? You know? <laughs> you know, it was just, I had balancing tears half the time on that tour. Because mm -hmm. I was like, how 
do you, it's not even about money. Yeah. Because we're not throwing money. We just came to give them good music. And mm -hmm. they were just, ah. So if you're African and you're in diaspora, when you're ready, mm -hmm. all you have to do is make up your mind, take a visit. If you're scared, like, to make that decision mm -hmm. once as a whole, take a visit, go look at it. You know, see the businesses, see what you want to do in Africa. Yeah. If the first country you go to in the first year doesn't favor you, look for another country. Look it for is, mm -hmm. uh, there's always something. But don't Africa. ever give up. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Giving up is not an option. We can't give up on Africa. It's the only thing we have. Right. Okay. It's the only thing we have. Because when all these other countries are gone, we still have everything we need here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need us more than we need them. Mm -hmm. But we've been brainwashed to think that you know, without the dollar currency, there's so much that could go wrong. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Africa has everything. Mm -hmm. I promise you, Africa has everything from the gyaldem to the money, <laughs> to the food, to the spices, right. to the talent. Wait, have you seen the talents in Africa? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to start. Like, I it's really massive. don't want to start. It's crazy. Trust yeah. me. Speaking of Africa having everything, you were talking about Africa being one country or something mm -hmm. like that tell the people about that because you yeah. have brilliant ideas i honestly uh -huh. honestly if africa was one country uganda would be a state nigeria would be a state mm -hmm. yes lagos would probably be a street or some <laughs> something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh zimbabwe would be a state mm -hmm. yes. everybody could go to anywhere they like we could mix up everybody learn everybody language you can marry anything do you know the kind of exotic babies <laughs> we have jesus christ and we have one bank one currency we share mineral resources. You need electricity. Nigeria has electricity. We run it to Uganda. Mm. We need uh, coal, you guys, whatever you have. You know, we just share that power. And I feel like the outside world knows that. Mm -hmm. So they try to divide us in certain ways. You yeah. divide to conquer. So mm -hmm. that's what's really happening. Even with the music. Sometimes you see, I've heard this a lot of times. Nigerian artists come to Uganda. They make music with Ugandan artists. Mm -hmm. And then... The Ugandan artists are pushing it out here in Uganda. And the Nigerian artists go back to Nigeria and just and they chill. Don't put, yes. Why you want to do oh. that? Then why did you do it in the first place? Oh, so they don't promote. They don't yes. promote. Oh. You get yeah. That's why I did that EP. I'm making a statement with it. The Jaribu EP is just East African artists on it. Most of the songs are produced in East Africa. Right. Because I oversaw everything myself. So it's like East African music from a catcher point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, so. What is, I mean, I mean, obviously, with Nigeria getting is the, the discrimination. Mm. I would say that, you know, we have, I'm a piano, which is coming on very strong mm. in the last four to five mm. years. But you see the culture of, you know, like I said, Burner Boys mm. selling out Madison Hard. Square Garden Hard. Was, a, was a great statement. Yeah. I mean, I, I was there in Poland in 2019. I think he sold out Berlin. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I mean, yeah. he sold out. I think out. after that, he came to... Kenya, so yeah. yeah. He sold out Berlin, yeah. and I heard the, at the time he was charging like half a million bucks, yeah. or twenty thousand, something crazy. <laughs> and I was like, wow! And every time I go on to social media, it went from elevate like, Nigerians or this or that, and then I started seeing everybody wanted yeah. to become like a Nigerian, Nigerian yeah. and it was just the most fashionable thing to do. <laughs> and and how do you feel that the whole world? I mean, obviously, you know. Me being an African American, I, I definitely can see our culture almost everywhere. Even on Kenya, I see us on the bus, Tupac. Yeah. You see Michael Jordan. Yeah. So I see that, but I also see it with with the Nigerians, mm. and you know, with people just that have hated on Nigerians for so long. And then now everybody wants to be a part of what you guys have brought out. How does that make you feel as an artist? <sighs> Honestly, it makes me feel like. <sighs> Even at, even with European dancers, they're yeah. dancing to your stuff. You don't take yeah. all the time. Chinese, yeah, Chinese, and they're good too. They're yeah. good. Actually, <laughs> it's like they're smooth though with it. Yeah. Like, yeah, yo, it's hard. I I I actually feel humbled because mm -hmm. you know being in Nigeria with all the chaos that goes on there, mm. and then you see the world recognizing this place with so much chaos the way they do. It is. It, is to, it, is, it just gives me goosebumps sometimes mm -hmm. when I see even other artists achieve things like Burna Boy and the rest of them, like you said, you know, it's, it's, I didn't see it coming. Because mm -hmm. I remember in two, after that time, 2000, 
18, 19 ish after he did that show in Poland. He had a show in Nairobi and I met him. I was like, yo, Bernard, what's happening? Like, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. How did you sell out that show? He was like, I swear I do not know. <laughs> he I'll show you the video. Like, I don't know. I'm just going to keep doing it the way I'm doing it yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Selling out of London <laughs> yeah. all the time. Like, I'm just going to keep doing it and whatever happens, we just go with it. I heard DeVito sells out London almost every all time he goes. Yeah. You see? So I'm just really, really happy. I'm really happy for everybody doing one thing or the other. You know, they're artists, they're, 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 they're uh, painters, they're doing great things in Africa. Mm -hmm. There are people that, you know, dance like the Ugandan dance crew that, you know, went abroad and did the, the ghetto kids. Ghetto kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we cannot not mention that. Mm -hmm. Was it Esther? Really yeah. Coaching him, yeah, it's yeah. those, uh, you know, yeah. those people like everybody in Africa now is like sitting up to own whatever God has given them and just amplify it to the world, right? Just like this podcast, we don't know who it's gonna get to, and if it gets to you out there, know that Africa is beautiful yeah. and we miss you guys and we love everybody in diaspora. This is not trying to butter you up, we're just telling okay. you for the truth of it. This is a podcast that you need to share with your friends and everybody that has missed Africa for a long time. Wow. Let me let me let me ask you this though. For those people that you were interacting when you went to New York, mm. those from the Guyanese yeah. community, yeah. Trinidad, yeah. mostly the black Caribbeans, Caribbeans yeah. they have never been to the continent. Never. Now you know Ghana is doing that year of return. Mm. And a lot of African Americans and Caribbeans have chosen Ghana over mm. like a country like Nigeria, which mm. is much bigger. But what advice would you have to people like myself who had no relationship with Africa? We grew up as African-Americans with our own, you know, maybe we have that ancestral African, mm, yeah. but we don't, we don't come up in the culture. Some of the, the, the Caribbeans also, but they're, they, they would like to come to Africa, but they don't have, they don't know what tribe they're from. They don't know who their people are. They don't know where to start. And it's easier if you're a Nigerian diaspora, you're mm. Ghana diaspora, yeah. you kind of know how Africa works. But what about our people who don't mm. know and they've heard so many terrible things mm. and they and, and they've seen poverty, mm. you know, they've been told yeah. that Africa's yeah. full of war, and flies. Kids. Yeah, and I they think, don't know the, 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 the good stuff about I think Africa. the first thing is education. You need okay. to educate yourself, re educate yourself. Okay. Because they tell you, oh, Africans are slaves. Oh, they put them on the ship. Oh, uh, that, that's just the basic of it. Mm -hmm. You have to first personally, now I don't mean like go to somebody that knows to tell you what it is right you have to personally mm -hmm. do your own research what is africa okay yeah. where is africa okay what does africa represent right what happened what is happening what do i see happening yeah mm. you know you need to learn by yourself like okay this is what Af this is what africa could become mm. from your personal point of view not what somebody told you right you know you need to learn like okay know the countries okay yes. oh some people think nigeria is africa yeah <laughs> I swear to God, I so you think Nigeria is the whole of Africa? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. There's so many amazing countries in Africa. Yeah. What? Yes, yes. There's so many. There are countries that speak French. Yeah. So yeah. let's say you're from Spain or wherever you're from, yeah. and you want to speak Spanish. There are African countries yeah. that speak Spanish. Francophone. Yeah. How, how do you get received in Francophone countries, by the way? Hey, me, I just go there. Bonjour, bonjour. bonjour. <laughs> I just play with it. I don't know no French. <laughs> I don't know. My friends, but, but do you sell out in Ivory Coast and yeah, like that? I just yeah. go, hey, bonjour. Like, bonjour. Oh. <laughs> but they feel the music yeah, though. They love the they music. know the words, yeah. even though they can't. They don't know what they mean. Yo, I was in Colombia and I was performing. I just dropped my first album, The Skelematic, at the time. Yeah, and they were singing the songs word oh. for word. I was crying. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm a very emotional person when it comes to this. My job, mm -hmm. like yo, I was like, oh my god, like. How do you people even know what I'm saying? But they, mm -hmm. they can't they speak English. Shout, yeah, they were catching it. And those were one of the most inspirational moments in my life. Like, eesh. that's when I felt like, yo, this music thing is a lot more serious than I take it because, mm -hmm. yo, I'm not going to be here every day. Mm -hmm. So by the time I'm gone, this is what people will remember. So let's yeah. give them something to remember, you mm -hmm. know? So I, I take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. I, I try to, everywhere I go, I try to drop a piece of my magic. So, okay. you know, when... I'm not here. I'm right. not going to die. I'm not just going to be here. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> I'm going to live forever through my music. Right. But regardless of it, somebody one day will play my song. Yeah. Right. That's reliving a catch up moment. Oh. You understand? So that's, that's how I feel. I feel like, yo, <laughs> Africa, Africa is not at its full potential yet. Okay. Everybody's still going to come back. What, is, what, is it, what does it need to reach its full potential? What's oh. missing? 
We don't love each other in Africa. Don't lie. You know, okay. it's true. We don't love each other the way we should. That's why you see, it's the conquer to divide system. You see, oh, I'm from Nigeria. You are from Uganda. Mm-hmm. We are different people. We're the same. Mm-hmm. Just because of the language or location of a person does not make them not human. We're all humans. We're the same skin, melanin skin, mm-hmm. brown mm-hmm. skin. You know, so if we have a little bit more love and that love would have happened long time ago if it was one country. Mm. But now we're still divided. It's just of recent. We're starting to understand that. Okay, yo, this is this. This could be my sister. This could be my brother. Mm. We can live together under one roof. Just learn to show each other a little bit more love. Not too much. <laughs> you, you can't love everybody. Yeah, you, right, you know. right, 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 right. So just, just a little more. A little bit yeah. more. Everybody just put one drop each. Mm-hmm. That's how you create a whole body of love and we can just give it you know spread it around it's yeah. just love africa just needs a little bit love to nurture one another i'm about to start crying oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, getting emotional. it hurts me like i know it yeah. hurts me it really hurts me yeah when we we're on tour <laughs> there was this girl chasing the bus yeah and she was like hey, and she did like this okay. and we did it back and she was like <laughs> She felt the love. Ask Uncle Sam. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. No, no, that was it. It yeah. is not expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love is really not expensive. It's right. just mm-hmm. a Pretty real sh- feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a real feeling. Just yeah. Yeah. A- aside from love, what else do you think Africa met needs to you know? That's it. Love we- and people. Because if everybody in diaspora comes back with a little bit more love mm. and the people here learn that love. Because trust me, people in diaspora actually love each other more than the people in Africa. Because if I'm abroad now and I see you and you see me like, yo, bro, you're from Africa? Yeah, cool, bro, cool, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you know how we do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. here in Africa, okay, I'm buying a cigarette somewhere. I say, where, where? The person will look at you and says, who do you think you are? <laughs> you understand? Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? What do you want to talk to? You know, that's what we do in Africa. Yeah. When diaspora, the love is there. Yeah. If everybody there could come back and re-educate one another, we tell you what we are here. Yeah. You tell us what is going on out there and how we can be better people. So you think Africa is missing also its diaspora? Yes. I promise you with the education that those people have because enlightenment is very strong. Those people are way more enlightened. The people in Africa that don't know what an escalator is. (laughs) For real. You see those videos. It's actually true. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's I crazy. think they're dying or something uh, Yeah, so if people outside can come and also re-educate the people inside yeah. mm-hmm. And the people inside re-educate the people outside And they form a strong bond Yo, the world is easy for the taking, I promise you We'll just take over the world and split it 50-50 all over Africa Okay Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This has been the, I think this is the episode This is an amazing <laughs> one Yeah, this is like episode 100 I think this is the best one man. Well, <laughs> and, uh, we got some classics. Uh, so yeah. you, Jeez, us, you guys, you guys have been. Yeah, you've done an excellent job. Any, anything you want to say to your future fans? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, all the people that have been listening to this podcast, first of all, God bless you for taking your time to listen to it. Uh, I go by the name Ketchup Pond Chips. I'm an Afro dancehall artist. You can follow me on Instagram, K E T C H U P O N Y I D O. I'm the only human being that's ketchup. The rest are bottles, so don't. <laughs> <laughs> so don't lose your way and um, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel yeah they'll put it somewhere yeah, in, yeah. This in the page. description box yes. yeah it'll yeah. be there somewhere so follow follow this page there's a lot more stuff I'm gonna be back on another podcast I like this yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should we'll do another one I'd love to do another we'll do about love the next time yeah okay. we'll talk about love and relationships speaking of love mm. tell them you're on the Pan-African dating show yeah uh-huh. my man God bless you my yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found something I found something yeah. I'm like a black unicorn yeah. How often do you see that? She looks Hard. Good. She looks very, very nice. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yo, God bless the Pan-African show. God bless this YouTube channel. Thank God you. God bless everybody. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's yeah. going to be right there. And after you follow me on Instagram, you're going to navigate with the Jaribu because I sell my music like... Like, yo, like Jesus Christ sells the gospel. Like, it's every day I post stuff. So you'll navigate Skillamatic album, the Colombiana EP, Energy Cycle, the Jaribu EP, which is meant for East Africa is out. Please follow me and make sure that you support your favorite artist. It's not, I know I'm not everybody's favorite artist. So if you have one that you like, make sure you support them, yeah. give them energy because artists are human beings too. We have our bad days, we have our sad days, but always, always support your favorite artists. Don't go with the crowd and keep supporting good music music all over the world wow all right well say thank you so much thank you so we much. just end <laughs> this one out yeah. and yeah follow us at 
Kengana Nation on all our social media platforms. Subscribe to the Pan African Dating Show. Subscribe to this channel. See you guys next time. Yeah.